you're ready to start making the most of your Remarkable 2, Supernote, or other e-ink tablet, I have you covered. Today, I'm going to show you how we can use digital templates for note taking and planning. Now, there are a ton of great options coming out for e-ink devices. I personally have the Remarkable 2 and I really love it. Now, these devices are different than an iPad or Android tablet. As a user, the features are much more limited. You can see it's a very thin, portable device with excellent battery life. It doesn't have the distraction of different colors or app notifications. It really is the closest I can get to that very focused pen and paper experience. So let's talk about digital templates and digital planning. With this concept, what we're doing is trying to recreate the experience of using something like a paper planner or a guided paper notebook right on your device. It's a great way to merge that open-ended creativity of paper with the perks of working digitally. Now, what we'll do is we'll upload a template and write on top of that template on your device. I'll talk more about the specifics in a second. Let's talk about a few things to consider when you're trying to figure out if your device is compatible. Number one, I mentioned you have templates to upload. These templates are PDF files, so your device has to give you the option to be able to upload PDFs, often through a web or desktop portal. Now, your device also has to allow you to add handwritten notes onto the PDF that you upload. This is often referred to as PDF annotation. So you can see right here, I'm writing directly on top of a page in the PDF that I have uploaded to my Remarkable. Now, the last piece is that your device has to support internal document hyperlinks. You can see here I'm tapping on one day in my monthly calendar and it's taking me right to that daily page. This makes it so convenient and easy to navigate through your planner. It almost gives you an app-like experience, but really these documents are now up to about 900 pages. So you can imagine flipping through would be so impossible and that's why the hyperlinks are really important to give you the ability to easily jump to different tracking pages, different months. You can get to just about any page of the planner with about uh, one to three taps. So definitely make sure that your device will support these hyperlinks. And the easiest way to figure out if you like the way that these templates work on your specific device is just to start with one of my free samples. This will allow you to test the layouts and the links before you commit to a full notebook or planner. Just click over to the link below or visit my site to grab your free sample. Now that we've covered all the basics, let's get into how to use these templates. After you purchase, you'll receive a confirmation email with your download links. Go ahead and download these files and save them to your local drive so you always have a backup to re-upload them in the future. I'm going to be showing these steps on the Remarkable, but most e-ink devices are pretty similar. You can see here I'm just browsing, finding that saved file on my drive, and clicking the upload. And it's as easy as that. Then it shows up here in my desktop cloud view, and I can click into it and see the document, make sure all of the pages are there before jumping over to my Remarkable. Once you've uploaded the document, then when you jump over to your tablet, it will appear there for you. Super simple to manage documents in that way. Now we won't use this video today to take a full tour of my planner. I'll save that for another day, but just a quick peek. I start off by giving you a lot of info and getting started to really guide you through the process of learning your planner. And I also have a full goal setting system that I call my goal clarity roadmap. This is exclusive to my planners and takes you from reflection to vision setting all the way through to goal setting and then helps you translate those goals through to your monthly, weekly, and daily planning. Now you have annual tracking pages and then we'll get into our regular planning pages. You'll see you have monthly, weekly and daily pages 
and each of the monthly pages links out to five bonus pages for tracking, a blank page, planning, reflection. Your weekly pages also have bonus pages for more tracking and more planning. It's so extensive what you can do in this planner. And then you also have a dedicated daily page for each day of the year as well. You can see how easy navigation is just tapping on the links. So there's a ton you can do with this document and my latest planners actually also include full template libraries of pages that you can duplicate over and over again to expand the use of your planner. Let's go through and look at the editing menu here. Now you have some different writing tools. I personally like to use the fine liner and we also have the ability to change the stroke thickness. In my digital planner, I like using thin and the black. And then we do have different options to erase or I like to just flip my pen over and erase that way. So let's start with adding in, I have a dance class that I take my daughter to every Wednesday. And so I'm just going to write that down here. Now, since it's every Wednesday, this is one of those great things about working digitally. I can circle it and copy it and then I can tap and it's going to paste it right there for me. And I could also go down to, you know, the weekly page if I want to paste things in down there so that I'm not having to rewrite it uh, across pages. And so you can see how quick it is um, just to add this to every week of my spread. So that's one of the great things about the selection tool. Now you have your undo as well. And then if we get down here to some of our page views, you can see that we can see all of our pages and there's a lot that we can do here to manage all of our different spreads. This is new with the latest update. So what we can do is we can now add a page in and when you add a page, it's just going to add a blank page into the planner. So let's say after December, we want to kind of have an overflow page to add some notes for things that we want to add to next year's planner. What I'm going to do here is just tap add a page. And what you'll see is it actually just added a page that's completely blank. And so in order for me to get back to the planner, I have to swipe over. And now I'm in my regular planner with all of my links. And that other page is just a blank page. So I could add on here and say, you know, let me make this a little bit thicker for us so that you can see what I'm writing. And I'm going to say add to 2023 planner. And I could just make this kind of a scratch pad of all of my notes. And I could add those here. So it's a good option if you need some overflow the other really great thing that they added in is a duplicate button. So what we do for that, say we have this spread and we want this to be, you know, all of our family obligations. And then say I want to duplicate this and I want to make another spread so that I can have my own monthly spread just for work things. So what I do is hit the duplicate button here. Now, the important thing to know is that the hyperlink will still point here, um, but you'll be able to just swipe over to this duplicate page. Let me show you what I mean by that. So now this is my 
work monthly spread. And I'm going to put all of my work notes right here. But when I uh, tap, sorry, let's hop right back in there. When I tap on December, it's still gonna take me to that original one. And then I know I can just swipe over to get back into my new work spread. So there really is a lot we can do with this. It is a newer feature right now in the Remarkable to be able to duplicate pages, um, but it really is pretty powerful and I'm really excited about it. Now, the other thing you can do as well is you can move a page. So say I wanted to move this one, um, you know, maybe before that last page, I can say move. And let's say I wanna put it after my personal one and you can place right after, and that's gonna move that page up. Now, there are so many different pages in this that I would say you wanna be careful about um, how far you're moving it because it would be a lot of scrolling. It can be hard to manage your pages right here. So, one other option you do have as well is you can add in different layers. Now the background is the imported PDF, so you can turn that on or off. And then you could add different layers. I tend to like to just um, kind of work in one layer, feels more like paper, but you could add additional layers if you want to be able to selectively erase things or highlight on another layer. You also, of course, have some sending options, and then you do have some quick options to add a new note page, um, which is just adding that blank page. You can do it right here as well. I hope you found this overview helpful. For me, I've become a lot more comfortable with my tablet as I've continued to use it and given myself time to experiment with all the different features. So if you're just getting started, I'd encourage you to commit to something really simple, like a daily journaling or planning practice that you commit to for just a few minutes every morning. This will get you in there using your tablet every day. The journal and notebook templates in my shop are the perfect place to get started with something really simple. And for more paperless productivity tips and inspiration, please like and subscribe below.